and welcome to another Conversations with Dr. Westman. Today we're going to be talking about body fat versus nutritional fat. And uh, there's a fundamental difference between eating nutritional fat um, and our bodies using um, its own body fat storage. And today we're going to find out what the differences are. We also have a bonus for you and it's uh, brought to you by Dr. Westman. It's his brand new guide, The Truth About Keto and Heart Health. We'll tell you a little bit more about this at the end of today's episode. We'll also put a link for you in the description. So let's get started and jumping right in. Um, most people believe that the only way that our bodies have access to nutrition is through the food that we eat. However, this is not entirely true. Our bodies have access to our own body fat under certain conditions, right? Yes, and it's important to remember that our body fat really is just a energy store, a storage place for our extra energy. And so you can tap into that and have lots of energy without eating anything. I mean, I mean it's not nutritionally complete to not eat anything, but you, if you have extra weight on your body, if you're overweight or obese, then you're going to have plenty of energy sitting there that you can tap into without actually eating uh, eating foods or drinking drinks. So yeah, it's important to realize that uh, I, I think of it kind of as a battery pack uh, that or, or a backpack you're carrying around with food already there. That's the fat storage, it's just energy. And uh, so you can actually uh, sit here and be alive and burning energy without eating much if you have fat on your body and most of us do. I mean, just about everyone has extra fat. That's really how we're built as humans. We store fat as energy storage. You know, to, to, to add to what you're saying and to um, give some examples, um, I, I love watching the reality shows. Uh, one of them is called Naked and Afraid. The other one's called Alone. And they have these reality shows where these people go and they survive out there on almost no food um, whatsoever for sometimes a month, two months, you know, 60 days. And um, some of the people, their strategies to come in um, with a lot of extra body fat, body fat. And by the time, you know, 60 days are up, you can see that they've substantially lost that, that body fat, which means that their bodies are actually living and, and feeding off their own body fat. Did you, yeah. did you watch these shows? I have. Uh, I, I have <laughs> the uh example of uh something like survivor even survivor and they can be afraid alone um the default fuel meaning if you're not eating anything your body burns fat that's remember we store extra energy as fat so if you don't eat anything you're going to be burning your own body fat so these are great fat burners when they're out there in the wild and the wilderness or the deserted island now uh, and yeah they hardly eat anything because it's difficult to find the food I, I think the naked part of that show is that they take the clothes off but they blur out the the private parts and the the afraid part is that there are things that will kill you like snakes and and alligators but so the interesting thing is that they in that show they show the beginning and ending pictures and weights and over 20 days most people lose 20 or 30 pounds so it's like a pound of fat per day that's being used off that person's body so uh, but I, i'm not telling you to not eat anything and, and to go onto a show like that but uh what happens when you don't eat anything is your body gets access to that fat store that you already have there. It's kind of like you're, you unzip the zipper of the backpack and you start eating from that fat storage if you don't eat anything. Now yeah. doctors, but doctors, excuse me, doctors used to do that, uh, but they found out that the body would start using its own muscle to get some, the required fuel that it needs. Um, and when you look at these people on these shows, they lose muscle. I mean, you can kind of see the, the lack of, of the same sort of strength. And so we don't want to do that as, as medical weight loss people. We, it's um, not the healthiest way to do it, to eat nothing. So what we do is we provide protein, which is the same substrate or same, so what your muscles are made out of and giving protein while you're not eating the carbohydrates on a keto diet is why you don't lose the muscle mass or the muscle weight, the protein weight 
like on those shows. But, but the main point is, yeah, you start burning body fat if you don't eat anything. Uh, and uh, our body's kind of default fuel to use is fat, not carbs. It's, it's fat and ketones. Remember, ketones come from your body fat automatically when you start burning your body fat. And that's why a keto diet is called a keto diet. It's because of the ketones generated by your own body fat. Now, that leads us into the next thing, which is the biggest myth surrounding the keto diet. And that is thinking that we need to eat copious amounts of fat um, in order to lose body fat. Yeah, that's one of the most common uh, uh, mis uh, mistake. It's a, um, it's a distraction because if you're trying to lose your own body fat, remember not eating anything, you'll start burning your own body fat like those reality shows, but it's not the, the healthiest way to do it. So you wanna have proteins, but you don't have to eat fats in order for your body to start using its own fat. That is a, probably one of the biggest mistakes uh, or, or distractions of internet keto that stops it from working for some people. Now, a lot of people can follow the kind of internet version of it and it works fine. I, I kind of fashion that as over-the-counter medicine. A lot of over-the-counter medicines work fine. You don't need a prescription. But if the over-the-counter version isn't working, then consider a prescription strength type of medicine or, or keto like we teach. Uh, and adding oils and fats and butters. See, these are all different names for fats. And even medium chain triglyceride is a fat that you don't have to consume to do a keto diet. Um, and your body will start burning its own fat, generating its own ketones, really just by eating the proteins and real foods that we would recommend on a properly formulated ketogenic diet. Now, tell me, Eric, what is the term fat adaptation? Well, if you're, you think of it in this way, you burn what you eat for fuel or drink. So if you eat and drink sugar, carbohydrates and starches get digested to sugar. So it's really kind of all the same thing to me. If you're going to be drinking and eating those things, you have to burn them. So a carb eater is a carb burner because you have to burn what you eat. So if you stop eating carbohydrates and your body's going to start looking around for energy, it's going to, be going to shift to that fat you already have on, on your onboard pantry, the fat storage, the backpack. And so the changing from carb eating and carb burning to not eating carbs and fat burning is what fat adaptation or keto adaptation is called. It has that sort of name keto flu on the internet, but it's not the flu. It's very rarely does it give you really bad symptoms. And most people don't even get it. When we went around the country with ADAPT events on Saturdays, remember we would have three to 400 people in a room and I would ask how many of you got the keto flu? And I estimate it was about a third of people said that they actually had some sort of side effect as they got started. So it's you know enough to know about it and realize it's gonna pass within a day or two. But keto adaptation or fat adapta adaptation is changing from carb eating and carb burning to fat burning. Now, you, you, you mentioned at the beginning of that, uh, when you answered that question, you said that people that eat um, carbs and sugar, they, they obviously are, um, their body burns um, sugar. So what happens to, to people, they do not, they're not fat adapt, uh, adapt, adapted, but they limit the fat that they eat, but they remain on a high carb diet. What happens to them? Well, high carb diets, uh, unless you're really, restricting the calories. And this where it's a little confusing. A high carb diet can work okay if you are really careful about how much you have. But most people don't limit the amount they have on a high carb diet. And that's going to raise the blood glucose. Raising the blood glucose raises the insulin in the blood. And insulin in, in the blood turns off the fat burning. So it's almost like you have a switch or control switch. You're going to either burn carbs or you're going to burn fat. If you eat carbs, it turns off the fat burning. And so you're not going to be doing well in terms of weight loss or, or getting into keto or ketosis if you're, going to, if you're eating lots of carbs. It, doesn't, it just doesn't work that way. So if you want to be a, a fat burning machine, the trick is to stop eating sugars and carbs. 
Yeah, that's really the essence of it. Is so that the insulin is low, you, it unlocks your body fat store. And then, of course, you want to have good nutrition, which is uh, on a well-formulated program. It, it's, you know, real foods that give you proteins and fats and minerals and vitamins that you need. Um, it, it's really not all that difficult once you get the, the, um, the bottom line, keeping the carbs low. Eric, wonderful. Well, thank you very much for enlightening us today on uh, that topic. Um, that's all we have uh, time for today, folks, but be sure to catch us again next week. Um, before you leave, reminder that we have a special bonus for you uh, today, which is the truth about keto and heart health brought to you by Dr. Westman. Um, and if you're worried about cardiovascular risk, this guide is definitely for you. Um, if you'd like to learn about some of our upcoming courses, you can go to adaptyourlifeacademy.com. Eric, thank you so much for your time. We look forward to catching you again next week. Take care. Thank you. Bye.